Anna Yezenya Flores has been working on tobacco farms since she was about 12 years old, sometimes working seven days a week to help support her mum after her divorce. Now 17, she hopes to be the first one in the family to make it to college. But those memories from the fields are hard to forget. The tobacco plants are like six feet tall and you have kids like me that are four or nine trying to reach those plants. You get very tired from your shoulders and your back and sometimes you get chemicals sprayed on you. Like I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to happen. Anna is not alone. Under US laws, if there's parental permission, then children as young as 12 can work on farms so long as it's out of school hours. The result, according to some human rights groups, is that there are children that have been exposed to pesticides and have shown symptoms of acute nicotine poisoning. And with North Carolina being one of four states that accounts for 90% of tobacco grown in the US, the problem is especially relevant. There's a real threat you know, to the well-being of, of these kids. It's different than like, you know, if you're picking cucumbers, which, yeah, it's long, hard work, you know, long, hard days, it's hot, it's hard work. But like, it's a whole nother ball game when, when you're dealing with tobacco. And here in North Carolina, it's an issue many hope is beginning to be addressed. In October, the Tobacco Growers Association of North Carolina issued a policy saying that children under 16 shouldn't be hired to work in tobacco farms, even with parental consent. And representing over 2,300 tobacco farmers, they say they don't condone child labour. Graham Boyd works for the Tobacco Growers Association of North Carolina. While he says there could be some cases of child labour, the issue has been greatly exaggerated. The scale is our, is our primary response. It just isn't, it isn't widespread. It isn't a, an epidemic problem. Uh, it, as I've said repeatedly now, it, it overwhelmingly does not exist. Um, there are many operations that we could go to today where there aren't any persons in the field. It's all done completely by machine harvest. It's winter now, but when it's time for tobacco harvesting in a few months, children under 16 should not be seen in fields like these. But with these tobacco workers so reliant on the whole family earning money, making ends meet remains a huge area of concern. They wanted to make sure that they had that that income would be replaced in some way. And like I say, you know, the greatest way to solve that would be to pay the parents more. It's a notion some reject. The Growers Association argue it will make families more inclined to put their kids into the fields to make even more money. But for Anna, she says it will make a world of difference. But she wants to see these companies do more than pay their workers a decent wage. She wants them to introduce schemes like scholarships so people like her can make a real difference for their families, starting with a full education. William Denslow, Telesaur, in North Carolina.